everybody. It's Mia with Chalk with Mia. I am here tonight um, with a project. I apologize. It's been a few nights um, or a few days since I have gone live. Part of that is because we had a huge vintage market at the boutique this past weekend and my time last week was spent with talking with vendors and getting prepped and getting ready and making sure that we were good to go. Um, but now that is behind me and I am free and clear <laughs> to have some fun crafting time with you guys. So um, what I have tonight is a really fun kind of holiday, quick um, and easy uh, decor item that I thought you guys would enjoy seeing. So I'm going to um, set up my camera here so that you guys can see what I got going on and um, that way... You guys can follow along a little bit easier. Okay, so camera number one. Oh, there we go. And number two. Um, and I will tell you guys, I'm actually going to minimize myself down here. And I'm just thinking, if you guys are here, say hello. Because as you guys know, my... Um, Software program doesn't tell me who's on, so I can never tell who's who's here. Um, okay, so also I wanted to show you guys some things that I did the other night that I was working on. Um, I was doing some sample pieces for somebody who was interested in um, some decor for the holidays. So um, look at this, super cute. It's just a wood block that I painted white and I put rejoice on there which is super cute then these are my favorite look at these they're little wood cookies okay and I painted these white and then um put you know a word or something in there I painted some of them green got the mistletoe this one is my all-time favorite I did kind of a really rough white finish on there as you can see, I didn't paint the whole thing. And then I put the little snowman, little frosty on there, which is super cute. So I did a bunch of these. Um, I just love them. I'm going to add a little bit of twine on the back of them, little nativity scene items. Um, add a little twine on the back so they can be ornaments. Hi, Missy. Did you get the text this time? So I am going to add a little twine and make those ornaments and they'll be super duper cute. And ready for the holidays. Love those. All right, so tonight, I know it's hard to see because I've got my painting background here, but I've just got three, whoops, spatial skills, three wood planks, okay? They were actually scrap pieces of wood that I did with, um, I did a combination class with my friend Suzanne. She makes wreaths, and so she was teaching people how to make the wreath, and then I was doing a chalk couture sign where we put this in the middle. Oh good, I'm glad. Hi Janet. Um, I put this in the middle with a chalk couture sign. So we did a combination class together because I'm not a wreath maker um, and I didn't feel confident enough teaching people how to make a wreath. I could probably, I make them on my own but nowhere near as beautiful as you know people who do that and, and sell them. So anyway, so I had a few pieces left over and I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them red for the holidays and then I'm going to take these words that I have um, from Chalk Couture. I have rejoice, peace, and believe and I'm actually just going to put them down here and we're going to add a little bit of greenery and maybe some either bells or uh, ornament balls up at the top and I thought that would make a really cute quick and easy um, holiday decor item. And again, I'm working with my favorite Dixie Belle paint here. This is Dixie Belle and the, it's barn red. I like it, it's a very solid red color. And again, I love working with Dixie Belle one. It paints uh, very thoroughly. A lot, a little goes a long way and it dries quickly. <laughs> so I can do all these projects in one full swoop on a live and we don't have to do it in like two stages. So I am just slapping the red paint on here. Again, if you guys are joining in, please say hello so I know that you're here. Um, please say hi. If this is your first time seeing me, then please let me know, say hello. You can request to join my VIP group. All you have to do is type the word VIP in the comments and I'll send you a link. 
um, that is for non-designers. A lot of times I offer tips and tricks and projects and bundled package deals or specials in there for Chalk Couture. Um, and I'm trying, as you guys can see, even from tonight's craft, trying to do um, even more craft projects as well. Um, I usually try to incorporate Chalk Couture in them. Uh, that won't always be the case, but I am working towards that because I have started a blog. Fun, fun, fun. Um, and I'm just getting it set up. It's under Southern Willow. I think it's Southern Dash Willow. So this is how infant I am in the stages. I haven't even, um, I mean, it's up, but I haven't started really promoting it yet because it doesn't have a whole lot on it. But I'm hoping to put some crafting projects on there and fun uh, DIY projects uh, that you can do. Very budget friendly. Because you guys know me, I love thrifting and upcycling and all those cool things. So I am almost done painting this burn red. This is like... Um, Elizabeth Arden red <laughs> if anybody knows who Elizabeth Arden is um, yeah it is bright to beautiful red Christmas red and whenever I do things um, I do like to paint every like all the sides even if I'm only doing something on the front I like to paint all the sides so that in case it does get flipped over or turned it looks finished right and I feel like if somebody's gonna pay me for this I want I want it to look finished um, so that's why I paint all the sides even if I'm not gonna put something on both sides so let's get these other two painted hopefully that will give the first one a little bit of time to dry What's y'all's favorite holiday crafter? Is there anything that you guys have seen that you want me to try? Because you know me. I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> I can't promise that it'll be successful. But I'm willing to try it, I think. Um, if I have the supplies or can get them or, you know, something like that. Because um, I think it's kind of fun especially this time of year. Even people who are not crafty, I think, enjoy seeing craft projects um, this time of year. Because most people, don't you think, decorate their homes this time of year? Yes, I agree, Missy. Yeah, it is a very pretty color. It's, um, you're right, it's not bright. It's just a, it's barn red. It is a very, um, solid red I guess is the best way that I can put it and I love that I had these pieces of wood left over and this was from a class golly day probably a year ago to be honest with you guys I mean it was a while ago but I did not listen to my husband and I did not throw things away <laughs> And I had it left over, which is great. It's kind of, it's, you know, you can, in what I'm envisioning you can use these for are on a mantle, at the base of a mantle, on a table, um, pretty much any type of home decor scape. Um, you could even put it on a front porch as a small porch sign, almost like next to a basket or a bucket or um, something, you know, in conjunction with some others. I don't think it would look good by itself, but I definitely think if you had it, you know, coupled with other things, maybe a sled, like one of those antique sleds or skis or skates or something, uh, that that would be super cute because it's just going to add another dimension. Let me make sure I got the coverage here. And you can see how quick these paint. Hi, Becky, how are you? Shelf sitters, yes, thank you, Missy. 
See, this is why I like going live. You guys can help me with my my craftsy and my vocabulary. Because <laughs> that's one thing I'm not overly good at is thinking of the names of things. I'm just propping these up so that they can dry without being completely flat. Okay, one more and then we can hit the blow dryer with it and quicken, you know, uh, speed up the drying process and then that way we can pretty much add our words in the greenery and gosh, you guys, we'll have this really cute holiday decor item done fairly quickly. And these pieces of wood, I'm going to tell you, they, they are, um, the person who did these for us did uh, get a, a buffer or sander, a sanding block on it. So they are fairly smooth on one side, um, but they still have the knots and, and all that stuff in it, which I actually like. I think it gives it a little bit of character. If you want to use a solid piece of wood, you absolutely can. It does make your life probably a little bit easier, especially when you're adding uh, the transfers to it. You like a, a solid surface. I'm good, Becky. Thank you for asking. I was just saying we had a huge vintage market at my boutique this past weekend. And so I, gosh, have been so wrapped up in getting ready for that, for that vintage market and we had a massive turnout. It was fantastic, um, but just exhausting. Um, we had so many more people show up than we had planned, and which is not a bad thing at all. We are completely blessed and thankful that it happened. Um, but certainly, when you start at 6.30 in the morning and you get home at, you know, 6 30 7 o'clock at night it just makes for a long day but that's okay no complaining here I can tell you that um so that is over and done with and I have been having such a hard time with Facebook um for some reason it logs me out automatically and then It'll tell me when I go to log back in that it looks like there's some suspicious activity on my account and then they put me in Facebook jail and they'll put me in there for like a day. And so it's literally, I will be out of Facebook jail for several hours in the day and then they put me right back in it. And so I can't comment. What's really strange is I can go live and I can do these lives, um, but I can't comment, I can't post, I can't, it's so weird. So I have been struggling with that a little bit as well over the last several weeks, actually. And I keep appealing it and I keep, you know, and I'm not really overly sharing or doing anything spammy per se. Um, it's just a weird glitch that's happening. So if, if you guys see I'm a little radio silent sometimes, it's not because I'm intending to be. It's because Facebook has <laughs> put me in jail. Um, so I've been, I've been trying to manage that too. Are you guys ready for the weekend? I'm so excited because the colder weather is coming. Oh, I'm so excited. I love, love, love fall. And I love winter when it starts. I can say by the time winter's done, I'm, I'm pretty much done with it myself. But for the most part, I do enjoy enjoy winter. Okay, so we have painted these red. Let me get another <laughs> little kickstand here. Cover up my red paint. Look how beautiful these are. Aren't these like the, it's like the perfect red. The perfect red. I love it so much. All right, I'm going to hit it with a blow dryer. Almost dry. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, as you guys know, I do like to hit it with a clear coat um, when I'm using the Dixie Bell. So I'm going to use now, it is, oops, put this the right way. Oh, again, spatial skills, I'm sorry, you guys. Dixie Bell clear coat. Um, and I do that when it's dry, which this first piece is, oh gosh, the clear coat. Um, the red, it is... 
Dixie Belle Barn Red. Can you guys see that? Yeah, there you go. Barn Red. Beautiful. I love it. How are you doing, Barb? Okay. So again, I'm just hitting this with a clear coat. For me, when I'm using Dixie Belle and stuff like this, it's like my layer of wax. Um, I won't really need to wax when I do this. And it goes on with like a sheen or almost like a uh, faded white or a cloudy clear, but it dries clear. Oh, I forgot to paint the bottom of that one. I'll go back and get that later. And I am going to do the back side just so it gives it a similar finish on both sides. And because it just takes seconds, so why not, right? Try to be consistent. Okay, I'm going to set that down. This has still got some wet spots, so let's hit the blue guard. Oh, Barb. I miss you, too. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm glad that you're doing well, though, Barb. I'm really glad. I am super glad you're doing well. I miss you, too. But, you know, our paths will cross again someday. So if you're just joining me, please say hello. If this is your first time on my uh, page here or seeing me, please say hi and let me know. The program I use doesn't let me see who's on. Um, and sometimes it even doesn't let me see all the comments. So if I don't respond to your comment, it's not intentional. It's just Facebook. Um, but I am, I have three wood planks here. They are, I can get a tape measure out here in a second. They're just leftover pieces I had from making wreaths. And I used a Dixie Belle Barn Red color. It's perfect this time of year. It's the perfect tone of red. Um, and now I'm just putting a Dixie Belle Clear Coat over top of it. So if you guys have ever watched me before, you know that I, uh, in, when I use Dixie Belle, if I'm using it on wood especially, I like to put a clear coat on it. That's like my wax. Um, it's like my wax surface that I use. So, and it'll go on, the clear coat will go on like a um, soupy clear but it dries very clear. So you can see this already has a clear coat. This one has a wet clear coat on it. So it does go on kind of foggy, but it will dry clear, which, which is really nice. But it adds a nice um, finished coat to it, which helps protect both the painted surface I just did and my transfers by offering like a little barrier. So waxing your surface or adding some type of coat um, basically is like priming your walls when you paint. You don't have to do it, but when you do it, you're protecting your wall, your surface, and you're protecting um, the paint that you're putting on it, your transfers and all the other things because you're adding a protective surface between a painted surface and yours uh, transfers. So. I hope that makes sense. That was really wordy, but <laughs> you guys, I think, get the point. All right, so I did forget to paint the bottom of this one red, but I'm going to go back and get that. It, like I told you guys, I'm really only chalking one side of these, but I still like to paint. Um, whenever I do a project, I still like to paint the sides, the underside, and the ends because I never know how somebody is going to... Um, how somebody's going to utilize the uh, the item, and so I try to assume that it's going to be seen from all sides. So to me, that's just kind of finishing up the project. All right, so let's see here. This one is pretty much dry, so we can lay this flat. I excuse the 
messiness back here. I can probably use a different mat. Okay, you know what, I think, all right. And this is gonna be fun because I'm gonna add some greenery. So if you're just joining me, I'm gonna add a transfer on top with a word and then at the top I'm gonna add some greenery and maybe some ornament balls or something I don't know something that will add a little bit more dimension sorry guys I'm trying to get it so I can pull this piece out from underneath because it's very distracting Okay, so I think if I did miss some of the sides, I almost kind of like it looks almost kind of rustic though. It's um, I'm gonna show you guys. I might go back and fix it. I don't know, but as you can see, kind of on the side, see how a little bit's like it's a little rustic in some of the places. I think I kind of like that. Yeah, Missy, it kind of gives it a finished look, right? Because you never know how somebody's gonna use the piece, and so kind of nice to give them a finished piece all right so this is what I'm gonna do I, I chose I went through my transfers and I have a ton of different words of different things but I figured rejoice peace and believe were nice holiday ones I also have gather thankful and blessed which I think would be nice for um, Thanksgiving. So what I could do is I've got this really cool color um, dried sage that I could use um, for Thanksgiving and I could do three more. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have done one side dried sage with the Thanksgiving ones and then done the Christmas ones on this side, but that's okay. All right. So um, yeah, so I can definitely do different words. Um, I could use fonts and use other ones. So there's so many different choices with this. But I think, I think we're going to be good here. And I'm just going to put these in white because I think the white is going to stand off of this red very beautifully. And let me get my nice... Um, I don't know what we call this thing. My big stir stick is what I call it. My big stir stick. Multi-tool. I think it's a multi-tool. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't use it very often except for when I have my big containers like these, which I don't think they even sell anymore. Um, because it's a nice, sturdy um, stir stick and it's long. So it goes way down to the bottom. And it's got a hook on the end of it that's perfectly designed for the inside of these containers, which is great. Okay. All right. Yes. Two for one signs. Absolutely. Yes. Ooh, okay. All right, guys. So let's see here. Let me make this. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I usually love twofers. I, you know, you guys have heard me say I used to sew children's clothes and I always sewed, I didn't always. I tried when I could to make them reversible so that you got two for one. Like if you had a little girl's dress and she spilled something on the front of it, you could literally just um, take it off, flip it around, and now you got another dress. Um, but in this case, that's okay. We'll make it one-sided. They're small. I, I've got a few more. I can make more. So I just put my transfer down. I rub my hand across it to make sure I got all the air bubbles out. You do a layer of the paste. You don't use ink on this one because ink is for permanent surfaces like fabrics. Um, and then when you pull this up, try to pull from the middle. You don't want to pull at an angle because you may uh, stretch your transfer. You want to pull evenly. So very nice and gentle. Look at that, rejoice. I love that. See, oh, let me put it the other way. I have my camera backwards. So rejoice, okay. So we got that one done. And again, I'm gonna offset all this empty space with some greenery, some ribbon. 
a couple of different things. Let me line up these boards and make sure that I'm somewhat in the same area. So we got red all over my fingers. I always look like, like this mad painter. I go to work the next day, even if I take a shower and sometimes I'll have paint in the most obscure places, like my elbows and it's always so funny. I'm always like, I promise I take showers. Now, I will tell you, if you have time to let everything really dry and settle, you'd be better off. Um, I tend to not be that patient or prepared. And so I do a lot of things on here live. But obviously, the surface is better if you can let the paint and the coating sit for a little bit before you apply it. Oops, this one is... I'm wondering if it's meant to be that way. It's got some speckles in it, which is nice, actually. Can't tell if it's meant to be that way or if my... Oh, I think it is. Because I see some of the green emulsification on the back. So, okay, we're going to keep that that way. And then, I believe... Can you go up a... Oh, yeah, I do see where there's some speckles in this. Okay. I was thinking at first maybe that my transfer was just getting old, but that's not the case. If you're just joining in, please say hello. If you're interested in joining my VIP group, it's for non-designers, uh, just type the word VIP down below. If you want to receive text messages about when I'm going to go live or if there's any special deals or anything going on, just type the word text in the bottom. And I would be happy to add you to my... Or, well, I'll send you a message to get your text, uh, to get your phone number, to add you to the text. Again, pull in the middle if you can, make it even. Oh my gosh, you guys! How are you liking this? Oh my gosh. Type the word rejoice if you are loving these little signs. I think they are so cute. Now we got to figure out how to add the greenery <laughs> and the extra decor items. Okay, so I am thinking, ooh, that is very wet up there. Yeah, okay. So I have got several, so I've got several ribbons. I've got this ribbon. I've got the more traditional, I think that might be two different colored red. I don't know. I'm not thinking that's going to go very well. And then I've got the holly leaves. Thanks, Missy. I've got the holly leaves, which is actually quite pretty. Um, okay, so first, let's see. I've got some greenery here. What I might do... I've got greenery and I wanted to give bells, but I didn't have any bells. So I'm thinking if I can, let me get some twine. Um, whoopsie. I have rope. Do I have twine? Do I have twine? Well, I have white rope. We can figure out how to use that. I don't know if I have... Oh, yeah, I do have twine. Okay. All right, guys. So, here we go. So, I've also got these uh, silver balls, little ornament balls, which bells would be very cute, too. So, um, that would be a cute option if you don't have the balls. Uh, ornament balls, you could do that. All right. I'm thinking I like the the fake greenery just a little bit more than the other stuff so can I just pull that off all right so let's cut okay see so what I'm thinking is we'll do a couple of twigs of this what do you guys think um with 
some of this hanging down, maybe. Maybe like here. And then a little bit of ribbon tied around the top. Okay, so I need some twine. Twine, twine, twine. Hopefully that's enough. I've never done this before, guys, so you are learning with me. <laughs> All right, so let's do, we'll tie this one off, I think, right? Do you guys think that that's a good idea? We'll tie this one off, right? And then we'll add this one at a different layer. And then we'll, okay, so let me, and we'll tie it around here, around the top, so that we have some type of, oops, finished edge. We'll tie a little knot here. Okay. All right, so we've got, and this one can slide. All right, so let's see here, guys. Never a dull moment. I'm thinking, I don't know how to, Probably should, maybe should have looked up ideas, but let's see if I can make a small little bow. And that might be just a cute little addition at the top, is to add a little bow. What do you guys think? Are we doing good? Missy, you're good with these types of things. <laughs> have you made anything like this? I'm sure you have. I'm just notorious for coming on here and going, hey guys, let's try this for the first time. <laughs> let's see how this turns out, right? Why not, right? I'm gonna try to make that not smaller. Okay, so when you make your bow, the great thing is, is I always try, when I use uh, ribbon for these sorts of things, I do try to get the ribbon that has the, it's not really wired, it can be wired, but it's got structure to it. So it's gonna allow me to maneuver it. When you use like a silk or satiny ribbon, it's much harder to maneuver that ribbon and to make it kinda sit how you want it to sit, if that makes sense, or to form how you want it to form. Okay, I'm gonna make this slightly the same okay and then right we just do this and maybe what we end up doing is just letting those sit on the end like that I can tie that back up okay so I'm thinking what I need to do is hot glue I know Missy how would you do it <laughs> it's not butchered now though look it's so cute it's a cute little ribbon see actually missy if you're coming down for our team meeting i am i'm getting my friend suzanne who is a ribbon genius bow genius and she's teaching all of us how to make beautiful beautiful bows she makes those really pretty big ones that you usually see on top of things top of wreaths and lanterns and different things oh look there's a slit right down the middle of this board I don't think the other ones have that this one just perfectly has one I'm gonna wait, wait for this to heat up a little bit she taught me how to do them uh, maybe about a year ago but I haven't touched it since I haven't done them since so I asked her if she'd be willing to come to our team meeting and teach us so I'm gonna bring a bunch of ribbon and um, let everybody can practice so I figured this time of year, if you're going to learn how to do it, this time of the year is the best time because, um, oh, a staple gun. 
Hey, Brenda, how are you? Long time no talk, lady. I am making these really cute boards and I'm adding some greenery and some ornament balls and a ribbon. Great idea with the staple gun though, Missy. Hold on, let me see if I can find my staple gun. Ah, all right. So, let's see here. Who doesn't love a staple gun? All right, so, and I've got a little bit of the burlap here. Okay, we're gonna try this, ladies. Any gentlemen who are watching, you too. Okay, hold on. I didn't wanna lay it flat, because now I've got those ornament balls. Ha! Perfect thinking, Missy, thank you. Okay, so now, I've got those. We're gonna lay this down. Oh, what happened? Oh, it came unraveled, okay. We're gonna ravel this back up. And I am actually going to hot glue gun this part down because I don't want that to unravel again. And we're gonna add a little bit of glue up here. Because we're gonna add that bow, it's gonna hide that glue. So I'm not too concerned about that. I push that down. One down, almost two to go. Hey Renee, how are you? How is everybody doing? Who is, I mean, gosh, I love this time of year. Are you guys just loving the holiday ornaments and decor items? I mean, hello. Okay. Then we're gonna add this cute little bow up here, and then we have this really cute, and I'll hold this up so you guys can see it. I might actually try to figure out, without having this little burlap piece, um, maybe I will, on the next one, hide that a little bit. I thought maybe with it being a piece of twine that it would be okay, but I'm not so sure now. Okay, so let's add this ribbon that I just, as Missy said, butchered. <laughs> but now it's a cute little bow. Okay, so we're adding that. And then I'm gonna show this to you guys and how cute. I mean, I've been on 38 minutes. I'm afraid the glue won't hold it even when I wrap twine around the boards. Yeah, I agree, Missy. No, that was a great idea because I completely wasn't even thinking of that um, staple gun. I think that was a great idea. Great, great, great. And I might actually, I'm gonna try to see if I can hot glue gun this piece of greenery down just a little bit. I need that, um, what's that hot glue gun that people use that doesn't have the, um, it's like the no heat glue gun or something? The, I don't know, it, it doesn't allow the strings that you get. Now I've seen this done, like I said, I've also seen this done with bells, which is super cute. I just don't have any bells. And so I used what I had, which were these little ornament balls that I had gotten. Um, I think at Dollar General, to be honest with you guys, I think is where I got it from. Okay, we're almost done with this one. I'm just trying to manipulate, and then I will hold it up so that you guys can see this, because it's super cute, quick and easy, and like I said, you can use any bow you want. I just happened to like this one because it had the holly berries um, on here. Okay, you guys, look at this. So... We have the cute little bow, and I'll let you guys see. See this little bow? It's got the holly berries and everything on it with a little bit of greenery and some twine and the little ornament balls, okay? And then rejoice down here. So again, I painted it with barn red Dixie Bell paint. I then put a clear coat on it. It's just a piece of wood, scrap wood that I had that I had used from a wreath class. If I can find my tape measure, I'll tell you guys, it's size, they're about three inches wide by 14 inches long by a quarter inch thick 
yeah, about a quarter inch thick or so. Um, but you honestly can use whatever, whatever size you want. But that is so cute. I am loving that. I wonder if I flip my camera around if that will make it. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to. Okay, hold on. Yeah, there we go. That way it's right side up. Sorry, guys. Don't want to make you dizzy. Okay. Super, super cute. Again, with the ornament balls. I might figure out how I can maybe tie them in without that burlap rope coming down. I don't know. It's not horrible, but for some reason it's just bothering me. Okay, so now let's do this again. So I have some more greenery here. I have a ton of, I just buy like a twig at, I think I got this one at maybe at one of the big box craft stores. I think I did, yeah. Although I know that usually the Dollar Generals or whatever also has sometimes these things and that makes it nice and cost effective. There we go, maybe another one, because I like things in odd numbers. We can do it in threes. This one has a little pine cone on it. Let's see if we can finagle that bad boy off. I don't have my wire cutters with me, and oftentimes, oh, I just chopped my finger off. Um, the wire cutters are more helpful. I don't know, three is kind of, a little too much and that's not long enough so we will do it like so okay again I need my twine so we're gonna wrap the twine around the top a little bit and then staple it along the back thanks Renee oh really yes Missy I am using scissors don't judge me <laughs> You know me, I never seem to have the right tools on hand. But yes, I'm using scissors. Okay, let me. I'm gonna just hot glue gun that twine closed. Oops, as I get hot glue gun all over my table. I'm like a hot mess. If anything, you guys can just enjoy watching me, like, struggle, right? Like, um, figuring out how to do these things. And go, oh, poor Mia. <laughs> but I have fun doing it. Okay, and another one for good measure. I do love my staple gun. That I do love. Okay, so we've got this. Now, to... I'm just thinking, how do I... Let's figure out a way to get these to set down. Thanks, Missy. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, like I said, there's no, you know, you can't make half of this stuff up. <laughs> there's no way I'm faking this. All right, so I've got this. Now let's make, now here's the thing. Should I make all three? I should probably make all three bows match, eh? Yeah, you think? I think so. And this is how I make my bows, or how I learned. So if you do it in the shape, hold on, of, you know, a W, okay? So do it in the shape of a W. You get two little rings here. Oh, I think I cut this one short. Hold on. Let me make a longer one. Um, and then you just tie them around each other. Hold on. That was slightly small. Hopefully I'll have enough ribbon here. Okay. So you make a W, right? Make a W. Or an M. Maybe that'd be better. Make an M. 
Okay, a very ugly M. So you get these two rings here, and then you just tie it like you're tying your shoe with the two bows. And just pull, and you get this really ugly looking thing. But what you can do is if, you, again, you're using bow ribbon that has a structure to it, meaning wire on the edges or something that gives it a little bit of structure, it allows you then to manipulate the pieces or, as Missy likes to say, butcher the pieces, Mia butcher the pieces, <laughs> into what you want. And you can make these really cute looking little bows. So the other piece probably wasn't too small, it's just harder to get it around. And sometimes that middle, I like to pull those, the, the ears really tight because it makes this piece in here a little bit smaller. And if you pull the tails, you can decide how big you want the ears. Does that all make sense? I hope so. Okay. So... Now I just twist this into how I want that, this how I want that, and then I cut these to the length I want it. And I just do this at an angle. There's a couple of different ways that you can cut the tails. You can fold them in half and that gives you like a dovetail. You can just cut them at an angle like I just did. You can, I mean there's, you know, lots and lots of different ways. I'm gonna put a lot of hot glue gun here. Oh, and I'm out of my glue stick. Okay. But I have a lot more because I ordered them from Amazon. Oh, thanks, Missy. It's the simplest way of making a single bow. Um, I find, at least, and it works. It seems to work well. Okay. works well of all different sizes so yay so look at that okay I do need to figure out how I'm going to add these guys you know what would be really great is fishing wire if I had fishing wire because it's clear um that would work really well oh I just dipped my scissors in my hot glue okay um sometimes I feel like the three stooges but I'm only one maybe Lucille can I be like Lucille Ball <laughs> can y'all just Make me feel like I'm her, because then at least, um, you know, it's somewhat funny, right? <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me grab another glue stick. And I've got, oh, you know what I do have? I have wire. Guys, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I have got, um... What do you call it? It's wire, but what you, you guys know what I'm talking about? The oh, the thread. thread too. Um, this is kind of like fishing wire. Um, the silver wire wiring that you can use when you're making uh, wreaths and bows and stuff. Sometimes that works. Okay, let's try this, y'all. Where to go? All right. So if I thread the ornament ball, right, with this very imaginary thread, I mean, I'm even having a hard time seeing it. I think I had this thread because, um, Funny enough, because I sew, my, hus my husband is a, yeah, it's transparent thread. Um, my husband is a softball coach, I'll tell you guys. Floral wire, thank you, Missy, yes. Um, and he had a player whose mitt was coming undone, and I had to, I tried sewing it for her, and whoo, you had to use this massive hook, because that's leather, that's like real thick, thick leather. And so I had gotten this transparent stuff. I can't even see the end of it. Um, to sew it, I think. But this wasn't thick enough for it, so I have all this, this transparent thread. Okay, so let me 
close this into a knot so that we can not worry about it falling off the end, okay? And then what I can do is just wrap it around. I can find where I want it, and then I just wrap it around the greenery, right? Because you're never gonna see it. I mean, like I said, I can barely even see it holding it. Okay. All right, so here we go. And that will give us a nice Um, addition and versus that burlap the burlap's not bad it just doesn't have the effect that I thought it would the burlap string okay all right guys hold on I should have done this part before I glued down the greenery because I can't oh there we go okay All right, guys, we're almost through with doing this one, and now that I know how I did this one, the next one will go smoother. Okay. Yay! See? Now you don't really see it there. How awesome is that? Okay. I'm sure you can use regular uh, thread as well, because thread is so thin. I'm not sure. Um, no, I I thought that too, Missy, to be honest with you, but this hoop in here is much smaller than this greenery. So if I really wanted to tango with it, I probably could, but this, to be honest with you, believe it or not, even though it doesn't look this way, is uh, simpler. But if it was a larger uh, hoop on the top of this ornament ball, then absolutely I could. That would be 10 times easier. My problem is, is the lighting right now in here is not that good. And using transparent thread makes it even more difficult. Okay, and not to mention I have this hot glue like threads flying around here and I keep grabbing those thinking they're my transparency thread but that's not the case okay here we go I'm gonna tie this knot so that it won't Dark on it. all right guys I promise you I'll get this everybody wait with bated breath okay <laughs> Hold your breath. I think I hear my son or my cat trying to come in the room. One of the two. I'm glad these are pl like plastic. Okay. Maybe what I'll do is I'll start the, instead of trying to tie the knot right at the thing. Voila. There we go. Okay. Lesson learned there. Don't worry about tying the ball or the knot right there at the edge because it's just fine at the top. Okay. Again, another lesson learned. Don't uh, tie down your don't hot glue gun your greenery until you get this because pulling this thread underneath the greenery would be so much better if I could just lift the whole thing rather than uh, trying to squeeze it underneath I can't even Feel it. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap it around this pine cone. That is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna tie it around the pine cone, and we're gonna let this dip just a little bit farther than the other one because you don't want them evenly spaced, right? You don't want them hitting side by side. At least I don't think so. You want them to just kind of hang just a little bit. Pull 
the wrong, ha, okay, look at that, they're not even seeing, all right, we're going to work with these later, I don't want y'all to have to sit here, I will do it afterwards and show you guys the finished product, <laughs> all right, let's get this one done, and then that way you guys can see all three of them somewhat in their finished state here, and that will be good. Or you could add the little berries to them too. That, that would be fine as well. You don't have to do ornament balls. Um, you could just do the berry. Okay. Again. But I do want some consistency with these, but if I did them again, then maybe that's, that's what I would do. Okay, so I need my twine because we're going to wrap the top of those and then staple it to the back. And I'll show you guys too, if you're just joining in, what I showed you at the beginning of my live was another project I had done um, the other night, not on a live. I was uh, doing some sample pieces for somebody who is interested in just a few little um, decorative uh, holiday decorative items and um, so I had done a few of these little mini wood cookies for her as an example of what can be done and they're super cute I'll have to show them to you guys here in a second I'm just trying to get some hot glue through here Okay. All right. Are you guys still with me? Did I lose you guys? I probably did. Again, like I said, I can't see from the software that I use who is joined in. So I apologize if you are here. Hello, hello, and thank you for hanging tough with me. Uh, okay. And one more for good measure. All right, so I've got that, and we're gonna do the ribbon. Maybe I can make it with this one that I did earlier. Again, my two, you know, my two little hoops here. Let's see, it's gonna be a pretty small one, I think, if I do this. Ah, nope, it's too small. Okay, lesson learned. Cutting a little bit too much more ribbon is better than not cutting enough because then you end up wasting some of the ribbon. Okay. Again, I pull these ears as tight as I can because I want that middle um, area to be small. That ear is big. And we'll pull that. And, oh, thank you, Mrs. Copeland. I'm gonna show you guys all three of these here in a second. If you're just joining in, you haven't seen, I've done three of these. And if you notice, I had about a five, 10 minute fiasco with these little ornament balls. <laughs> but I'll attach those later and show you guys what I ended up doing. So for right now, I can just add these. But again, um, you can add Christmas bells, you can add berries, you can add, gosh, there's just so many different choices um, that you can add to these. But I just love this uh, Christmas Oh, thank you, Leah. I just love this Christmas design, holiday design. And you can use so many different words. I used peace, rejoice, and believe. Um, but again, it literally, um, you know, you can do harvest, grateful, 
blessed, thankful for, um, I was saying for Thanksgiving, you can paint them beige and then put those in like orange or brown or black and then add a little bit more of a uh, Thanksgiving themed ribbon at the top. Maybe even wrap the, it, uh, the board in twine all the way down and then add the ribbon on top. Ooh, I might do that next. And I'll take a picture of that one because I won't make you guys suffer through me doing trial and error. Um, and I've got, I didn't leave myself a whole lot of space at the top of this one. Hold on guys. Let me just add a little bit of hot glue gun in here. Inject some hot glue. Um, that I might try that one too. That would be super cute, I think. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you guys all three of these. Super cute. I love it. And like I said, you can add, and maybe this would be easier than the, the ornament balls. Hold on. If we added just a little bit of this, since it matches the ribbon, right? And then I could just hot glue gun that bad boy to it. All right. This one has a pine cone, which is super cute. And this one has the ornament balls. Are those not super cute? Oops. Of course, that has thread on it, so I just grabbed it. But, yeah, I'm thinking the berries are cute. See, this one I added, it's got a burlap rope, and they kind of just hang. But I'm thinking these berries are 50 million times easier. And that is what we're going to end up doing what do you, because it matches the ribbon. The ribbon has these little holly berries in them. If I could have added that underneath the rope at the time, that would have helped, been helpful. Yep, there we go. Look at that. So cute. What do you think? This should be a class. Oh, <laughs> Leah, we could. We could totally do classes. Um, absolutely. I think people would like this because like we were saying, they could be wall sitters. They could be um, on the porch. They could be, I'm actually going to take these things off because I'm liking these holly berries just a little bit better than I like the rope or the little things. I think if I had um, bells, maybe that would be better. But for some reason, they're just not sitting the way that I want them to. Oops, wrong way. And these berries just add just a little bit more of a holiday twist to it. Super cute. All right, guys. Yay! <laughs> All right, so that is it. I know I've been here for an hour. We kind of rustled through those little ornament balls, but... You know what? That's one reason why I like going live with these, especially if I've never done them before, because you guys get to see the trial and error and you can learn from my mistakes or kind of what hasn't worked or what has worked um, and kind of work through it and, and kind of do it together. So thank you so, so much for joining me. I will take a picture of the finished product once I get those hot glue gun down. And um, I really appreciate you guys joining in tonight. If you are interested in joining my VIP group, just type VIP in the comments. Remember, it's for non-designers. Um, if you are interested in joining Chalk Couture as a designer and being able to make really cute projects like these with me, whether you want to do it as a hobby or as a job, as a side gig, whatever it is, just type the word... Um, uh, Chalk Couture in the comments or join and I will contact you so we can have a quick discussion about things. Bells and berries, super cute. Yes, I agree. I didn't have any bells, so I thought the ornament balls would be good, but I agree. The bells would be super cute. Um, and so, yeah, so please, please, please just join on in and, uh, let me know what you guys are interested in doing. All right. Thank you so much for joining tonight. I'll see you guys soon.